There it is. Kibalti kviya. Now, next step is going to be salt and pepper. Koyev li nora, but I'm mixtoi. Wow. This is your host, Dorelai Zerovich. You are welcome to buckle up and join us on a journey of discovery of the Jewish community in the USA through food. It's going to be funny, it's going to be interesting, it's going to be exciting, and it's going to be delicious. So maybe you should unbuckle your seatbelts. The Jewish foodie, lift up. Welcome to the next part of the foodie Yehudi. And we continue our journey in Texas. Texas. ואחרי שבפרק הקודם פגשנו קאבוי יהודי, עכשיו תכירו קאבוי שהוא גם רבי. את יור אורי? יור מי רבי? כן, אני מחכה לך. ברוך הבא. ברוכים לאוסטין, טקסס. אני אוהב את הרבה. זה מי קול רבי. זה נאום הוא ניל. אוקיי. אז אוסטין זה מאוד 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 but there's a really thriving Jewish community here as well. So where are we heading? I think you'll enjoy it. It's a, uh, it's a deli, it's a Jewish deli that yeah. also serves breakfast tacos. Uh, come, right here. Yeah. Please. 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 Thank you so much. Mm. So this is an Austin staple. These are breakfast tacos. Yes. And um, it's a very important part of the community and part of the, part of the culture. Uh, the Jewish community in Texas is older than you think. So we have um, about 160,000 Jewish people in the state of Texas. And they're the last um, report was about 20,000 Jewish people in Austin. However, Austin is growing quite a bit with Silicon Valley and other industries coming here. So that is my goal to be in Austin. People ask me why I stay in Austin, why? And it's because it's a really wonderful family and it's a great place to continue to grow and dream. My rabbi is so smart. יש אנשים שהולכים לרבי שלהם להתייעץ על דברים, יש אנשים שהולכים לרבי כדי לפרוק, ויש אנשים שהרבי שלהם לוקח אותם לאכול את הטאקוס הכי טובים בעיר. So this is a very wonderful place, Biedermann's. It's very close to the center of Jewish life in Austin, where my synagogue and other communities are. And it really fuses sort of a Jewish identity, which is the deli. It also brings uh, breakfast tacos, which are quite good. Uh, and it's a, it's a way of, of making people relax and feel that they can be here and meet here. And uh, it's a nice anchor, a culinary anchor for, uh, for our community. And it's, uh, again, uh, brings people to this area as well, which is really great. So uh, the owner is here. Zach, would you want to come join us, please? I met Zach, who is the owner of the place, who is also a Jew. Hey, Zach, Ori. Welcome to nice Bitterman, to meet Ori. you. I was born and raised in Austin, just down the street from here. And about six years ago, um, we decided to pursue the, the deli because um, Austin has a large and growing Jewish population, and uh, we did not have a, a Jewish-style deli at the time. So it fit perfectly. There was an opportunity here. I decided to do a burrito with filled fish and chazeret. It seems like he was a minimum, he said yes, yes, but I heard the voice of the voice, no, no. We do not have to fill the fish uh, based on lack of demand. <laughs> <laughs> we suck with the kind of the basics. Uh, we sell uh, uh, a lot of Rubens. It's the number one seller. You want to try a Ruben? So I would like to talk about the fusion between Texas 
and Judaism. Well, in Austin, I would say Austin is one of the breakfast taco capitals of the world. Uh, we thought breakfast tacos were a natural fit, but we did want to put our Jewish spin on it, and we um, make a, a house-made Swiss queso and potatoes, uh, egg, which is the, the natural three ingredients of a breakfast taco, and then we added pastrami. One pastrami, one Reuben. And the pastrami really adds that kind of Jewish uh, fusion uh, that you speak of, uh, and it's absolutely delicious. Wow. Why would you go anywhere else? Hebron, you over to Austin. הייתה לי ארוחת בוקר מאוד קלילה. מה אכלתי? אכלתי ברו קופי, טאקו עם אבוקדו וחביתה. אכלתי פסטרמי בטאקו, פסטרמי בסנדוויץ'. אכלתי רובן גדול, ועכשיו לא מספיק כל זה. מה שאכלתי, אני גם הולך לאכול המבורגר בגודל של הראש שלי. שטיפת קיבה באוסטין, מתחילים. I'm looking at you guys. I'm watching you work. So, Mo. You're like the Jew boy, right? So the story is pretty simple. I'm from El Paso, largely Hispanic community. The term homeboy, very common. You know, it's, it's a term of endearment. Hey, you're my homeboy. Yeah. Um, growing up, I was one of the very few Jewish kids that did things like played football, that was hung out with friends that weren't not Jewish. And so the term Jew boy is just a derivative of homeboy for me. Yeah. You know? For the restaurant name, it reflects everything. It's the food, it's the decor, it's the people. You know, I like fusion. I like when you mix things up. So, yeah, that would be me. Aben Adam is just mushlam. And I also love that there's a story behind the name. It's not just the Jew Boy. That's how they call him. He grew up in El Paso. Listen to the music like this. He grew up in the border between the United States and Mexico. He was born as a boy. He was the Jew Boy. He was a young man. So how did you start this place? So this place actually started as a food truck. My background is advertising. I decided after 14 years of owning a full-service ad agency, I wanted to just be a consultant. So I got bored. Um, so I figured, well, I'll do a food truck for a couple years, maybe a couple months even. Well, long story short, it just turns out I like making burgers better than I like making ads. We were offered this space, and here we are, a year and a half later. So, so anyway, so that's how I started the food truck. But I mean, honestly, you look hungry, dude. Let's eat. Yes, I am. Let's go to the kitchen. Trevor, you want to make a burger for me, sir? Oh. Veino patach makom mush lam. We also get gam shimush balatkes, which is very, very Jewish. So when we make our latkes, we actually bake them and then we fry them. So it's a little different from traditional latke making. The hamburgers are so delicious with one solid bread. The key thing to understand with my burgers are onions. Yeah. Okay. Onions are what makes these burgers juicy. They're what makes them flavorful. The first thing we're going to do is lay those onions down, let them get a little caramelized. Trevor, he's going to lay those burgers down. All those onions are just giving up their moisture. They're just saying, okay, I'm going to get in on this burger here. Now, the next move, and this is the critical move, takes a piece of deli paper, burger press, and it is a smash burger. Yeah. There it is. Give it a hold. Beautiful. Next step is going to be salt and pepper. Salt and pepper, not as much as you would normally see at a restaurant. Usually, salt and pepper is really heavy on a burger. Here, it's just a light dusting. Now we're going to let them grow for a little while. You call the restaurant the Jew Boy. Were right. you afraid? I'm not afraid. Yeah. Aware, concerned. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's the world we live in. But I, I don't believe we should live in fear. I don't believe that you should let other people dictate what you do. Um, if people don't like it, they don't have to come here. Yeah. Um, but here, there's a story to be told. And so as long as I can explain to somebody, whether they're 
Jewish, non-Jewish, it doesn't matter who they are. As long as there's a story, I feel like it makes sense. Did you have any pushbacks about the name? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, sometimes it's a review, you know, on Yelp or Google, and people who have never been here say, I'm giving it one star just because of the name. I've never been Jewish there. Jewish people or not? Both. Both? Both. The first issues I had were with Jewish people who didn't feel like it was right and said it was a negative stereotype. And I said, look, I respect your opinion, and I still do. And I won't try to change your mind. This is my story. You don't have to like it, but I ask that you respect my opinion and my story. And it's worked out pretty well. Um, nothing really so far, I mean, knock on wood, nothing really blatantly anti-Semitic. Um, occasionally a comment on a Facebook post or something, but Austin's a very open-minded town. Austin is very cool. So people come and they're just more like, what's going on here? What's the story? Yeah. Why did you call it that? How can you call it that? And then it starts a conversation. And then we talk about food. And then we eat. <laughs> Simple as that. Yeah. As I said, food makes peace. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right, thank hey, you. Hey, Trevor. It's a burger with a latke directly on it. Wow. OK? Now, I would never cut a burger in half. When you cut it in half, you let some of the juices out. You always want to keep your burgers together. But for this particular case here. That. Wow. Vodka. Wow. Pickles, mustard, lettuce. Okay. Now, this burger you see get nice and juicy in there. Okay. Time. 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 Nice and juicy. Yeah. The latka gives you a little bit of a crunch, a little garlic. Why? Apart from the plum, I heard that you like the Mexican jalapeno, right? So I want to introduce you the Israeli jalapeno, pilpel shivka. Mmm, delish. You can put it inside of the burger, yeah. That was really good, man. I'm going to get to the heart of this guy. He's a very special guy. He started with a food truck, and he went and grew up, like the Jewish community in Austin, Texas. Dude, I really appreciate you guys coming out, man. It's really cool. Thank you for having us. It uh, means a lot to me that you guys are doing this. And the more people will talk, the better the world will be in, you know? And I truly believe that. Communication is everything. Food. Culture, the more we talk, the better things will be.